graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Come on, God. Answer me. For years I'm asking you why. Why are the innocent dead and the guilty alive? Where is justice? Where is punishment? Or have you already answered? Have you already said to the world, here is justice? Here is punishment? Here is it's just a coincidence that you were talking about the Jack and Triumph show and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, the guy who makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at smodcast.com, and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcasting. You're listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Now, here's Chris Colon and Austin Chudy. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Austin. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to watch the Infinity War trailer over and over for an hour and just keep riffing on it over and over and over again. If you want to participate, just go to YouTube and bring it up, but it's not the Katy Perry version. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Katy Perry's an Infinity... Well, it, it's, that's sort of weird that that was the first result on YouTube when I looked yeah. up Infinity War trailer. That's because you, for some reason, don't have an ad blocker on Chrome. <laughs> I thought, well, I, no, I do have an ad blocker. I think I do. I might have turned it off for, for uh, this is a, YouTube. This is a fucking riveting story <laughs> show. <laughs> well, you know, it, this, that, that's what this is. is a, a casual conversation between two people uh, when we get ready to uh, record. We're, and we're actually recording this before work, so like we can't, we, we can't go two hours. It's going to be a rush job. Uh, well, no, because... <laughs> I mean, I don't know, because you like to get to work early, right? I, do, I, I mean, if I'm not out the door by 2 o'clock, I feel like I'm late. Oh, my God. And, and it, it takes it, you, like, half an hour to get... About. I, I always stop at my girlfriend's work, say hi, or, like, run a coffee or something, so... Oh, you, so we're on the time limit today? Yeah, like, oh, okay. She'll no, no, so, so understand we're podcasting. You're like, hey, sorry I didn't make it. Please. Not swinging can, by your job. Can I, can I sleep in the bed tonight, though? Is that cool? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we still have the uh, the guinea pigs? Yeah. Uh, is that still politically correct to say? Guinea pigs? Uh, they prefer Italian American pigs, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and the hamster. So we'll see who makes a, who makes an, a, an appearance, yeah. audio wise, on the podcast. All I, right. I gave the guinea pigs lettuce right before we started. So hopefully, if we crinkle something, they don't freak out. <laughs> yeah. I test it just to... crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Oh, well, good. they they certainly yeah, they, they, <laughs> they perked certainly up. perked up. Like, yeah. oh, but we just finished eating big giant leaves of lettuce. Yeah. But um, okay, so since the last episode, since the last episode you were on, because thankfully now, it's funny how like all of a sudden that I kind of introduce you to the show. Now Paul's like, oh yeah, we can record, we can record. <laughs> uh, you're my insurance policy. I'm sure they're unrelated. <laughs> you're my you're my Hollywood Babylon. To, for those who've been following <laughs> oh, that God. saga, the uh, yeah. the you know Rob Garman no longer works at K Rock, and I have to tell you, I listened to the Kevin and Bean podcast. And it was the, you know, obviously at this good morning show, it's usually morning shows like four or five hours a day or whatever. So it's obviously like the highlights. And so I listened to the podcast and the podcast, you know, it's about an hour long and they put them out every two or three days. And Ralph was that show. Kevin and Bean are not, I mean, I don't be wrong. They've been around because I mean, Ralph alone has been part of that show for 18 years and they've been around. I mean, I remember in the early nineties when Howard Stern was getting syndicated to other towns Howard Stern made a big deal about like attacking the local guys at the time. So I remember hearing about Kevin Bean years ago, but you know, if you, I can only imagine how horrible that show is going to be because I technically I'm still like subscribed on Stitcher. I gotta unsubscribe like to make my voice hurt. Like you, you fired, you fired Ralph. This is bullshit. I'm I'm not listening to one of your podcasts ever again. Yeah. <laughs> and it, you know, so uh, so yeah, so you're my and so Ralph has his. 
Ralph is going to kind of, I guess, continue on with the Babylon. And hopefully this 2018, they'll start visiting all the cities, which would be awesome if they did a Babylon, Western New York, you know, either Buffalo. I mean, Rochester would be ideal, but very likely would be Buffalo since Kevin seems to like hitting, hitting Buffalo. Yeah. Um, but if they did one up here, that would be fucking awesome. Um, so like you're, you're my Hollywood Babylon, the way, the way Ralph has like, like Hollywood Babylon is his fallback. Yeah. Like, you know, calls your K-Rock. <laughs> pulls my K-Rock. That's, a, that's such a shitty thing to say this week. <laughs> and uh, so we both listened to the, I mean, the podcast, we're going to talk about another podcast, but uh, Ralph had uh, went, he, he had given his side of the story. They had a home show where he had told his side of the story. And uh, because I guess they're going to be doing Denver, Colorado. I think, no, they did Denver. They're doing Denver tomorrow. The day we're recording this, right. they're doing Denver tomorrow. No, no, Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Kevin thought it was Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, see, we're both full fucked up. But uh, so they were doing the show. So he's like, why bother all these people in Denver about a L.A. radio show? Let's do a home show. And uh, But I thought it was really interesting in today's climate that for, he, he got a chance to say goodbye. He did his last uh, 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 Hollywood beat. What was it? Uh, Jesus Christ. I listened to show I listened, business, show business, business beat. beat. And so he did his final show business beat, and he goes, you know, this is my last Kevin and Bean show. And he was kind of had, they kind of gagged him on what he can say, what he can't say. He basically just said, this is my last show, and then walked off, you know. But then, in this fucking climate of, of think people getting fired for, like, sexual harassment and stuff like that, he had a, they had, they had to bring him back to yeah. specifically <clears throat> say, oh, yes, I'm fired, but I'm not fired because yeah, well, of well, sexual well, harassment charges. It, it wasn't like they pulled him back, like, I, I guess he does, like four showbiz beats in a day or something like after the second people started talking so they're like already on twitter yeah so they're like next time you go out you need to make sure this is known yeah because <laughs> bringing them back after the family like, right, well that was my last thing half hour hey just so everyone knows this wasn't a sex thing that, that tells everyone oh this is a sex thing <laughs> But it's, it's like, you know, it's so sad that in this day and age, it's like, yes, I'm being fired, but I'm not being fired because I'm a creep. <laughs> I'm being fired because my boss is a fucking asshole. Oh, there they go. Yeah. <laughs> they just ran into their, their bag. Yeah. Why do guinea pigs have a sleep in a bag? Is that a thing? I, I mean, they seem to enjoy it, so I guess it's a thing. It shuts them up. <laughs> <laughs> now the bag is moving. It's like turned into a giant robe. <laughs> yeah. All right. Creepy fucking pigs. So since now, the funny thing is that uh, I haven't released episode. We I originally asked you to come on the show to, to speak about Stranger Things. Yeah, and then we got a whole episode of content before we even got to Stranger Things. Yeah, we had a whole episode. Uh, I have the first, us discussing the first two Stranger Things episodes, yeah. which I kind of will be like my one in the poop shoot, you know, ready to go in case we don't record or whatever. Yeah, I, know, I know you like to have one in the poop shoot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes two. <laughs> <laughs> Three if I had a couple of drinks. Uh, okay. But, um... But since then, uh, and it feels, it's so weird because like you were like you gotta gotta see gotta see Stranger Things gotta see Stranger Things we gotta finish so we can talk about it and then yeah. not let anyone know. <laughs> and then right after then uh, since then, mm-hmm. Punisher. Yeah. And Punisher sort of came out of nowhere because it was supposed to be released right around New York Comic Con, mm-hmm. and they were I I believe they were even planning to do something at New York Comic Con. They were gonna do a panel and they canceled it because of the Vegas shooting. Yeah, the Vegas shooting. Um, but then like I guess Netflix just said. Fuck it, because yeah, if yeah. we have to postpone Punisher every time there's a shooting in the United States, no one's ever gonna see Punisher. <laughs> and you know, I mean, horrible. We're laughing about tragedy, but because uh, we can. Uh, <laughs> but that being said, um, you know, not only did they give a trailer, like they give a trailer with playing fucking Metallica, yeah. which is my. I mean, I'm wearing a Metallica shirt right now. Um, you know, with uh, one. Of all songs, one which is sort of a like a, a, a anti-military song based on Johnny has his gun, sort of a it's it's, it's weird because that's what I felt about the Punisher is that they definitely addressed gun control and of, and of mental health and, and, and well, they, post-traumatic they, they stress disorder, gun control and mental health and all that by putting just ridiculous straw men on both sides of the issues. Mm-hmm. So like the you know. You know, four Second Amendment guy was just this lying asshole who's just like <laughs> roping in veterans to be like, "Hey, we need to defend our rights." And turn, you know, he he was never a non- stolen valor. Like, stolen. I, I don't want to say yeah. stolen valor. No, no, valor no, no, definitely stolen valor because he like you know got a, a he was, fake medal. He was, he was flashing yeah, flashing a, a silver star yeah. or whatever. But, but then on the other side, you had the congressman or whatever who was just like a very like 
oh, we need common sense gun control, all this stuff. But then the hypocrisy was he, you know, hired a private military company to protect him while he was going on that <laughs> campaign. Just, and, no, no, no one comes out looking good in it, which I guess is the answer you need to have if you don't want to actually take a stand. Yeah, it wasn't heavy handed. It wasn't like, you know, oh, we're going to ram the. Ram this down your throat. Ha, ha, ha. It's better than they have points on both sides. Mm-hmm. It's better to be like, well, neither side is 100% right. Mm-hmm. So here's Frank Castle just killing. It's not to say, <laughs> on top of everything, I was like, I mean, at least the show was brave enough to address gun control. Yeah. And this was way before any kind of tragedy or whatever. I mean, there was previous tragedies, but they're more not the more recent one. But it's sort of like, let's address gun control. But let's also have the most bloodiest fucking... I mean, I can't think of anything... You know, we have to keep in mind this is relatively Disney-related. This, yeah. dis, Disney made this show. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite possibly the most bloodiest thing that's ever come out of Disney that I'm aware... I mean, other than the probably... I'm probably Amblin or... The entire probably... planet dies in Dinosaur? Other than that, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Dinosaur is... What, what is it? A comet or something? Yeah. Well, yeah it's like... A, the higher body yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, it, this show was so bloody, and it, especially like the last like two or three episodes, it was just. And I happened to watch those three in like one binge night, you know, like yeah. like I'm, it's like four o'clock in the morning, like one more episode, because I I knew it was the last episode, so I'm like, Wait, was are like we, we getting into spoilers? Um, I guess by now we can yeah. we can spoil it because if you it's, haven't watched, it's been weeks. Pay eight dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't pay eight dollars. I, I still got a chance to watch it. <laughs> no, I will, I'm not promoting um, illegal downloading of right. television shows. He's just a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so what, what? What do you want to get into a spoiler? Or? Oh, just that the fight with Billy Russo on the carousel. Yeah, is that the, the last two fights? Not really two kills, but the last two fights are just the most brutal. <laughs> Certainly that I've ever seen on Netflix. I'm trying to think if there's movies that have been more brutal than... Like, like 28 Days Later and Weeks Later did the Thumbs in the Eyes thing mm-hmm. that they do with Agent Orange. Which we had we had mentioned, that we you and I spoke about. That was a really good shot. It looked so good. It, it looked so real. And I, I think the actor's dead. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like you know, was it, was it a practical effect head that he was jamming his hands into? Was it... His hands were going into a practical head that was CGI'd on top of yeah, I, an actor's I, I think, face. I think they just they shot matched it. They had the actor react, swapped him out. It, it was brilliant. It was, yeah. you know, I mean, not that I know what a person person's eyes being gouged out by thumbs would look like in real life. But I, I'd, I'd imagine just it would the look like that. Here and blood shows up in the place. <laughs> There's got to be, but there wasn't any eye juice. I, 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 I <laughs> dear Netflix, more eye juice uh, when you gouge someone's eyes out. Also, more eye juice than Stranger Things. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, let me see what else. And now, keep in mind, like, I don't, I don't think I saw Punisher Warzone. I mean, oh, that might be. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> we, we, we live just north of the city. There's not really, like, roosters around here. <laughs> that is my alarm. That's my... To, to let you know that it's 1 o'clock and you're in the middle of a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my... Because uh, we go to work at 3. It's 1 yeah. o'clock. It's sort of like, get your fat ass out of bed. Yeah. If, if you're still sleeping by this time... Yeah. If, if you're going to wash your sack today, now's the fucking time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so they were... Um, yeah, that's my ball washing alarm. <laughs> But on uh, that's why it's a cock. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's a relation. There you go, full circle. Do you have to pay to use that sound clip? (laughs) Oh, uh, it's yeah, uh, fair use. (laughs) We're 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 reviewing the reviewing the alarm. I found the alarm very uh, effective and kind of uh, funny in an ironic kind of way. Yeah, I I I would say on a scale of all the alarms I've heard today, that is the only one. I, we just kind of woke up. So. <laughs> um, now, what I was saying before my cock started making noise, uh, um, I I never saw Punisher War Journal. I, Warzone. Warzone. Sorry, or War Journal is a comic. Excuse yeah. me. So one of, one of the comics. Oh. Um, you didn't miss I, out on a lot of story with Warzone. You just missed out on a lot of good Punisher parts. <laughs> now, I mean, I I do. I have seen the Thomas Jane one. I have seen the Dolph Lundgren one. I haven't seen the Dolph Lundgren one, but which I feel like is probably an okay thing. To say. Yeah, it's. Uh, but I mean, uh, my point being is that like, and even those, both those movies, I haven't seen like since like the years they came out. Like you know, I I don't follow Punisher. So I was not familiar 
we're going to spoiler ter- ter- territory about a character named Jigsaw. Right. You know, it was sort of something that someone wrote on Facebook, and I kind of read, and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, Billy Russo is going to become Jigsaw. And I didn't know that, and I, I didn't know what was going on. And then the whole thing, the whole one of the things that kept pushing upon us, here's this handsome gentleman. Mm. You know, that's sort of his whole role is good looking guy, you know. And, and when I was going into it, I didn't know off the top of my head that Billy Russo was Jigsaw's name. I just, you know, I'd seen Warzone twice. I was like, oh, it's the guy that becomes Jigsaw. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure he was named Billy Russo in Warzone. Mm-hmm. And he, he's not a handsome guy before the accident either. It's like, it's, he's just got kind of a fucked up face. Mm-hmm. But, but, and that was preserved for me that right up until he kicks his face into the glass, mm-hmm. I had no idea that was, they were setting up Jigsaw. Yeah. They're, 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 they're like, oh shit, no, he's leaving him alive. He's going to be Jigsaw. Yeah. Grinding his face into the mirror and yeah. stuff like that. Which sort of I felt was like an allegory, like them fighting each other, like yeah. brothers looking in the mirror, oh. you know, but then using the mirror to destroy his brother's face. Yeah. I, I, I would have taken it more of like a his vanity thing, like, oh, all he's, all he's got is his good looks and his balls, and the only thing he got in this world, Chico, is balls, and I, I've never actually seen Scarface. <laughs> a hoss is a, f- was it, no. So it's a pig that can't fly straight no more. I only know that from a video game. <laughs> Now, um, I, I forget the uh, the Homeland Security. Medi- I want to say Medina, and I know that's not it. It's Medina. Not. Medina is about 40 minutes <laughs> west of here. M- Madani. Madani. Madani plays a Homeland Security uh, official who, when I... And I said, in my in my mind, when I first started watching the show, I'm like, that's a Hispanic actress. Stop fucking... Don't give me the bullshit that she's Middle Eastern. She just... But I looked her up online, like on Wikipedia, oh, she's and she is she's like a mutt. She's like, you know, Jewish and and Polish and 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 Scandinavian. And she's like, I guess that's what happens when you when all the colors combined, you you come up with that. You know, you end up with the Rock slash Gal Gadot. <laughs> right. so essentially, Pakistanis are the perfect people. They're like the Ubermensch. Yeah, they get the. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, and and when or Af- Afghan. Yeah, <laughs> and but but now the her mentor on the show, the guy named Rafi, yeah. was he supposed to be Middle Eastern? I because I kn- like I'm kids songs. <laughs> I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure that actor was Hispanic, but I don't know if they were trying to. Rafi could be short for Rafael, which is a popular Spanish name, mm-hmm. or Rafi. Rafi sounds more Middle Eastern. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, now now you're playing the fucking bullshit where you're saying, here's a Hispanic actor he's supposed to be playing like he's Middle Eastern. You know, don't, don't know. get, you know, like Chris Rock said, you know, I, uh, you know, don't say that's Native American. That's just a Puerto Rican with a feather in his hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, um, from, uh, that's his, one of his old comedy specials. But, uh, so I, you know, I was like, no, she's Spanish. But, you know, once again, spoilers were just talking about the Punisher. She gets into, like, a major car accident. Her and Punisher fucking play chicken. She gets T-boned by Micro. <laughs> that sounds that sounds dirtier than, I meant, than it meant to be. I mean, if it's a Micro, <laughs> is it really getting T-boned? <laughs> and so they show her bandages on her chest. I mean, bruise the fuck up. Then she goes to... Then, I, then magically, there's this whole sex scene. And then, like, Billy Rooster meets her, and they fuck the night they meet. And he's railing her. But then... I mean, it's one thing to have, you know, they're having, like, intense sex. But, like, he's grabbing her right where she's black and blue. And it's not... Like, she's not wincing. And I don't... Th- maybe, maybe she's, like, into it like Daredevil, man. She's, in, like... I, like, I don't know. You know she Matt likes Mur- the pain. Maybe Matt Murdock's not the only masochist <laughs> in Manhattan. Now, is this the first series, if I'm not mistaken, without Night Nurse, without uh, Rosario Dawson? Because I was, yeah. we did not see Rosario Dawson. I was no. waiting for. No, the uh, give me the, her two. Is she supposed to be the, like the one-legged veteran? Is the Night Nurse for this one? Oh yeah, yeah. Curtis. No, Curtis. Curtis. Curtis yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm, har- I'm horrible with names, yeah. but uh, you know, you seen it all the white ones. <laughs> <laughs> Medina, Madani, <laughs> uh, Billy Russo, Frank Castle, Lewis, you know, the guy that's in three episodes, uh, Claire Temple. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we had Claire back from uh, Daredevil, who's now working for a newspaper. Yeah. I haven't watched any of the shows since, like, Daredevil season one, so I thought she was still their secretary. Oh, wait, you're, you're going kind of blind to this whole thing? Yeah, I, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't watch The Defenders, I didn't watch Jessica Jones, I didn't watch Iron you, Fist, you I didn't watch... Season two? I didn't watch season two either. Yeah, um, well, Nelson and Murdoch dissolves. Oh. Oh, spoilers for something <laughs> that came out last year. Um, Nelson and Murdoch dissolves, and she winds up working for the paper. Um, just kind of like 
when she was always following Ben Urich's leads, mm -hmm. she just like kind of got comfortable with his job and took his office. And oh. She's basically the, the Ben Urich now. And then we had Mike Rowe yep. on the show, who I, I haven't looked it up yet, but I'm 99% sure is like a British actor. But he, he he gave a pretty convincing American accent. If it's he's, not hard. <laughs> well, yeah. I've been doing it my whole life. <laughs> How hard can it be? Americans do it. Um, Watch TV. Half the people you just looked at are British, and the other half are also British. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, it's like sometimes... Well, no, I guess that's true. It's always like you see an actor and then you see them like interviewed like on a – they go to a talk show and you're like, I had no fucking idea they were <laughs> not American. Oh, yeah. When I played Doctor Strange, did you? <laughs> <laughs> tangerine. The size of a tangerine. Um, but Micro uh, – I thought Micro's wife was fucking gorgeous. You know, very sexy. Um, and once again, this being a Disney show, like it was one of the second to the last episodes, or whatever, like he's he's fucking his wife hard and like, and it was oh, pretty hot. Like in the bathroom while the kids are in the other room, <laughs> yeah. like, hey, fucking take a powder and play Monopoly without us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a show that, you know, doesn't, I mean, okay, it's Netflix and stuff like that. Um, something else pointed out to me that I didn't realize until until Kevin Smith brought it up is like they don't say fuck. Yeah, they, they can't say fuck. They can just illustrate the absolute essence of what fucking <laughs> it's, is. It's like, yeah, a husband could take his wife to the bathroom and mm. fuck her silly, like as, as long but as you can't say fuck. As long as you don't see any holes or say fuck, you're in the clear. You <laughs> yeah, can do whatever you want. You can want. gouge a man's eyes out with right. your bare thumbs. Right. And like you, you, you can tear a man a new asshole quite literally. <laughs> you just can't show the original one. <laughs> And the show started a little, um, you know, he was Frank Cast, no, Peter Castiglione. It, it, it was a slow burn character study. I don't know how much about those. <laughs> you know, he's hammering fucking holes in walls. Oh, he, he came so close. I thought for sure he was hammering a skull into the wall of the construction site. Yeah, but both would, the. Would have been so on the nose, but also like my new laptop background. <laughs> Like, it would be this, like, he hammers out just the shape of the skull, mm -hmm. and the eyes would be like two windows of a building across the street in right. the background or something like that. It would be, um, he just would, like, put his hands up on his hips <laughs> and, like, the American flags waving out in the background and shit. He's just like, Netflix is the punish. <laughs> and, I mean, thank goodness it wasn't that corny, but still, it, I, in the I, beginning, I, I, it was I'm just odd, you know, you know, he's, he's, he's a man on the run, and he's hiding, and he's working in a construction site. But then there's, you know, there's bad shit going on at the construction. You know, he just happens to work the one construction site that, you know, guys are going to rob a mob mob boss or they're going to mop like a mob poker game or something like that. Like, well, well you know, thankfully like, he's there. Yeah. You know, construction workers and government contractors and shit, they don't make a lot of money. So they, they need to have side hustles. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that $25 an hour holding a sign on the side of the road only goes so far. <laughs> and yeah, so it's a. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, what else is there on the show? There's the Madani, her sidekick. Was her sidekick supposed to be gay? Is, was that a hinted that he was gay? Because he, I think he had mentioned he had something. He had said, he had said something about Billy Russo, or whatever. But it was sort of, I don't know if it was one man admiring another man who was supposed I, to be hinting I, I, that I would he was gay. I, like, you know, I look at Billy Russo. I'm like, yeah. I mean, if, I, <laughs> if I had to pick between him and someone else, probably him. <laughs> um, you know. If I had to. <laughs> uh, you know, the show was really intense. Yeah. You know, I, I guess sort of it reminds me of like Daredevil. Like, well, Daredevil, I could watch like two episodes and kind of take a break. And yeah. Punisher, I needed to, I watched like one episode and then just took a break because it was very intense. I was the exact opposite. I just, I dove <laughs> right in. Just <laughs> cleared it out in like two days. Just like, oh, I've, you know, got a half hour lunch. Let's watch half an episode and finish it when I get home. But it was, you know, he kept flashbacking to his wife dying. He had he had different fantasies about his wife dying. Right. And, uh, and you know. each one sexier than the last. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he kept like you know, like that. That was like a reoccurring thing. It's always like him just waking up out of bed with his wife, like "Hi, honey." You know, then you realize there's plenty of time now that you're home. Yeah, fucking see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, with, there's the uh, he's there was a there was okay. He was oh then there's the the PTSD guy, the 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 the, stole, the soldier. Oh, uh, that Lee, was Lee Harvey Oswald from eleven twenty two sixty three. Oh, that's him? He got kind of pigeonholed. Oh, wow. It's, it's like, what are you doing? I'm hunting fascists. I'm going to kill JFK. And then this is like, we got to take down this drug government, too. Wow. I, I didn't know he was in 112263. Yeah, he is pigeonholed as the lone gunman who dies trying to 
<laughs> make a difference. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know that. Okay, so uh, yeah, he's, but that, that whole storyline was really fucking depressing. He's every white man who's been on the news <laughs> in the last six months. <laughs> every disgruntled, mm-hmm. uh, I want my country he's, back. <laughs> he's, a, he's an ex-military who tried to kill people and got killed for it. Oh wow! All right, um, all right. So we were watching. Is there anything? Any other things you want to talk about? Punisher I mean, or, or we're, everything. I, I'm calling it now. This is probably just going to be an hour of Punisher. <laughs> well, I'm trying to. I, I mean, I'm running out of things to talk about. I don't know what else. You know, you got the theme song. The theme song, yeah, I, which I felt is the illegitimate bastard cousin of the Sons of Anarchy you, theme song. You rant about that a little bit. I'm gonna try and just <laughs> figure out what it is. But uh, so you you had your theory that it was. That it was a... Uh, it sounded like an instrumental of, I want to say, a Johnny Cash song. A Johnny Cash song. Um, the the intro, pure fucking uh, gun porn. Uh, you know, it's funny, like... it. You know, to to use the words that of of guys that are assholes. If you're if you're if you're a snowflake in need of a safe space or whatever the case may, be, you know, if you're one of those guys, I mean, the intro is literally it's gun porn. It's literally here's a gun falling apart. Here's a slow motion. Uh, picture of a gun shooting and then like here's stylized a, here's, here's like, the barrel of a gun going in and out of the barrel of an rpg <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was very and then, and then right as it pulls away it shoots <laughs> yeah it, uh, it was very phallic it was very um gun porn is the best way to put it. i mean everything is slow motion the gun fo- like breaking up into little pieces and then coming yeah. back together and you know then and then all the guns coming together to form the the skull of the punisher which is yeah. pretty fucking sick yeah um, but you did a little research yeah, right there, so, right now? Uh, and again, this is just me saying on the fly what I think, or at least how it made me feel. Is there's a song "God's Gonna Cut You Down" by Johnny Cash. Basically, mm-hmm. the idea is doesn't matter how good or bad or a person you are, eventually you're going to die. And if, you know, if you're bad, I'm coming for you, kind of thing. And that very much fits in with the theme of the Punisher. Mm-hmm. And it just it's at least the same like tempo, time signature. Mm-hmm. Cousin guitar riffs, if nothing else, it sounds like an instrumental of that to me. Oh, okay, and it, it could not be. I could be wrong, but oh, okay. L- l- oh. Listen to you know, watch the intro of the Punisher, then listen to that song. It's very oh shit, is that that? Yeah, I, for, I mean, just me, just from just like hearing it, I was just sort of like, hey, it kind of reminds me of the Sons of Anarchy uh, it, it, theme it's, song, yeah, it's got it which through this which road. <laughs> all alone. So I oh, let's let's make fun of an excellent show. <laughs> No, it's it's <laughs> the fact. <laughs> I want to hear the Trey Parker cover of it. <laughs> yeah, look, both of us can sing it, and we both haven't. I I haven't watched Sons of Anarchy in what two three years since uh, it's finished. The, the last time I watched Sons of Anarchy, it was during the broadcast of the finale, and I've just I never looked back. It's like that was an excellent show, and it does not require revisiting. Yeah, I've and... already read Hamlet enough. I don't need to watch it for fucking twenty hours again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I didn't know you had told me that the guy that played half sack oh, killed his went, landlady. Went fucking crazy. I, I think it was or his something to that or effect. His neighbor uh-huh. basically he got in like a, a motorcycle accident or something. His, uh-huh. he, his brain got Gary Busey essentially. Oh. And but a bad Gary Busey, right? Not, 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 like, <laughs> not the fun. I'm I'm, I'm the ginger dead man. It's, it wasn't that. It was like a, I'm fucking violent and insane now. Uh-huh. Um, and so police responded to a call. Goes to his landlady or his neighbor's house, whatever, mm. and just this like old, old Hispanic woman, fucking killed her, killed her cat, and then was like trying to leave off the roof or something, fell off the roof, and he died in the fucking driveway. Oof. Uh, his name's Johnny Lewis. Johnny Lewis. I, and yeah, he's just. <laughs> and, and and like it's one of those deals where like now if I go back and I for if for whatever reason I rewatch Sons of Anarchy, yeah, I, I like, find oh, the box set one day. Yeah. Usually the half sack scenes were always kind of funny. Yeah, now it's just this guy. Years like, later, would be a murder suicide. Yeah, he's a fucking piece of shit. Which you know reminds me uh, the story I brought up well, later. Later also was uh, the movie The Bronx Tale hmm. with the the main actor in that movie. Uh, well, not um, not Robert De Niro or uh, or I forgot the other the other guy. You know, we'll, we'll just say that he's Ray Liotta, even though he's not. <laughs> no, well, I, well, if I'm not mistaken, the guy who plays the gangster actually wrote the movie. Also, like he's an actor, but uh, and just it's just like Kurt Sutter kind of did in Sons of Anarchy. Anyway, okay. Continue. So, but the the main the young actor, the little kid who grows up, um, his later on he got into drugs. Him and another guy were robbing an apartment. The cops showed up. I believe his accomplice shot at the cops, missed. The cops killed his friend, and he got arrested. And it's sort of like. 
you know, I can't enjoy a Bronx Tale now knowing that he was a drug addict that shot at cops. Mm. You know, and and that was a, it's such a good movie, yeah. but I don't want to see his fucking and, face. And you, you can say that at anything like go back and watch the Naked Gun and the OJ scenes just don't feel fun anymore. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Jesus Christ, it's been so long. Yeah, it's, I haven't I haven't seen those movies in a while, but. Yeah, that's like yeah, because because the whole running joke was that he was always getting hurt and dragged yeah. under buses, right. and, <laughs> and I was just like, "This is a murderer." <laughs> who, wow. who, who wrote a book called "I Did It"? Here's how it happened. His publisher said you should really throw an if at the start of that <laughs> if you want to save any fucking face. <laughs> um, well, I guess I mean to kind of bring it back, what we were mentioning earlier, like <laughs> like the, the like people would brought up on sexual charges, <laughs> like you can't watch the usual suspects anymore. Right, was it Kevin Spacey? Yeah, was like, I mean, he, he was a rapist the whole time. <laughs> uh, well, he was a rapist, and he was he was uh, he was gay the whole time. You know, that was, that was I gotta watch that. Family it was guy. from Family Guy. Uh, they're they're goofing on the last scene of uh, Usual Suspects, where uh, Kevin Spacey's character goes from walking with a limp and all crippled to walking normal. And so the you know you're supposed to say, oh, he was Kaiser Soze the whole time. And he was gay the whole time. <laughs> Which I don't know if that joke was already already existed in I, that. I, I don't imagine it did. I think they're just quick, or we're slow, <laughs> <laughs> or they got it in. You know, they got it in under the, under the wire. Um, uh, hey, uh, I think that's why Kevin Spacey got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he getting it in under the wire. <laughs> no, you got to wait another four years, sir. Um, but he was so Two hot. Alabama. <laughs> he was so hot. Um, I mean, not that I'd, I'd ever go back to Superman Returns. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wait another four years, Mister Spacey. Wrong. <laughs> I, I didn't. I did not like him as Lex Luthor. So I'm, you know, well, he's officially the worst Lex Luthor now. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, Jesse Eisenberg is like, who's laughing now? Right. <laughs> I, I may not have been a great actor, but at least I didn't rape anybody that you know of. Uh, no. <laughs> wouldn't shock me. You know, like, like, who would willingly? He's a little shit. Yeah. I can't, but I can't see him even building up. I, I just see him like, building up the guts to rape someone. <laughs> I, I see, I see a fan like going up, be like, "Hey, you want to go back to your place?" And he's just like a fucking asshole. So we're like, "No, fuck you! I've got stuff to do in the morning." And just walks away because he's a prick. By, by all accounts, he's just a fucking complete diva. But he's no Kevin Spacey. <laughs> but, but at least he didn't rape anybody that we know of. Um, well, and this is, uh... Not that Kevin Spacey raped anybody. He forced himself on people, but... He wouldn't, no. Uh, if, if, if he wasn't so whiskey-dicked, one, he wouldn't have forced himself on anyone, and two, he would have been able to. Yeah, seven? It's weird. It's like a, it's like a Catch-22 sort of thing. And yeah, seven? Seven? I love seven. Uh, you know, like, I mean... Well, he's the bad guy, so you can just... There you go. It's like, wow, he's evil and a rapist. He's <laughs> evil, evil suspects, too. He cut off, uh... He cut off, uh... Gwyneth Paltrow's head put it in a box. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been brought up on charges. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know, I love... Seven is such a good movie. You know, I, you know, I, I love David Fincher. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'm just... Just thinking like all this shit, like I shouldn't say this. I'm trying to be the straight man on this podcast here. <laughs> but uh, yeah. just, all right, I'll, I'll do it. He, he pours himself on the 14 year old, just shouting, "What's in the box?" <laughs> Rape isn't funny. Sexual assault is not a laughing matter. Hey, but when, but when when people start getting consequences for it, you get to start making the jokes. You know, to, to, to quote George Carlin, you know, "Fuck you, I think rape is hilarious." Yeah, yeah. All that matters is where you set the exaggeration. Yeah. Picture Porky Pig raping. Yeah. Fun. Hey, what do you think they call him, Porky? <laughs> but you know, while we were talking about like superhero movies and sexual assault and stuff like that, <laughs> while we're at it, <laughs> while we're at it. Yeah. Um, nice and it was, well, it's in my it's in my show notes. <laughs> nice segue. Let's talk. Let's Infinity talk about no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Andrew Kreisberg, like yes. one of the 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 main driving forces behind the Flash. Wait, why? Why was that main driving force? Like a guy that's a rapist? That's kind of well, I don't know. That, I mean, like I get where your train of thought went, but you didn't finish. The I'm track. a horrible person. Um, like your train of thought derailed. I'm like, yeah, it landed down that hill. I get it, but like that's not what it's supposed to do. <laughs> Um, but Andrew Kreisberg, uh, you know, he was a guest on Fat Man on Batman like a year ago or so. Um, it's like every time Kevin Smith talks to somebody, they become a rapist. <laughs> Who else did he talk to? Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, Andrew Kreisberg, who along with Greg Berlanti gave us The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of the Tomorrow, Arrow, all those shows. 
You say gave us like I knew those were gifts. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I like The Flash is a good show. And, and you're welcome. Supergirl's a good show. I can't get into them. What? Well, spe- well, Flash and Supergirl because they're still light. Arrow is fucking just dour. I just can't I, fucking get into. I, Arrow. I need my shows serialized. If there's even a hint of formula or episodicness to it, I tend to tune out if it's like a forty minute show. Like, like South Park, I can get into even the Orville because that's like it's light, like real, real lighthearted. But mm-hmm. like, I, I can't get into the. There's an overarching story here, but also we're doing the same shit every week. I, I can't. I understand that that will, that's what TV was forever, mm-hmm. but I just I can't get in. I, I need it serialized. It needs to be like going to the Rocketeer once a week. Yeah, I, I mean, I. I guess it's sort of it, to me. It's sort of it's par for the course on yeah. a show like that. Especially a superhero show is gonna be villain of the week. Well, yeah, and like you that, know, monster that, of the week sort of a that's deal. That's what soured me on Smallville was you've got all this rich history. You've got your you've got the main villains you need in the show, mm-hmm. but every week it's what did the Green Rocks do to someone? Because we don't know it's called Kryptonite yet. Oh yeah, and it's you know like oh here's Iceman, but he can. Control lightning. I, I don't know. That was years and years ago. It was like, oh, yeah. what's Sean Ashmore doing on this show? Isn't he Iceman? <laughs> it it jumped the shark when like Lana Lang became a vampire, and I was like, okay. I, I was like, I was like, okay. I I can't watch this show anymore. <laughs> At the end of I want to say season five, Clark and Lex meet in the Fortress of Solitude. Mm-hmm. Some MacGuffin shit happens, and the fortress falls down on them, and that's the end of the season. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? It's not going to get better than this. <laughs> that was a pretty cool way to stop this show, and that, that's when I walked away. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think with that, we'll be back with more Dick and Fart Jokes. This episode of Two Strangers, One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. 1115 East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building. Door number eight. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Ah, uh, necrophilia. Ah, uh, yeah. uh, uh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was. How did be you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Click and hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. You can leave the pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient, getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit www.click-the-letter-n-hit.com. That's clickandhit.com. And now for listeners of Two Strangers One Podcast, you can use promo code STRANGERS and receive 10% off your purchase at clickandhit.com. That's promo code STRANGERS for 10% off your purchase. And we're back. Okay, so we spent the first half of the show talking about Punisher. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> and, and sexual assault. 
<laughs> it sounds like a but, t- but not how they go hand in hand, which is kind of surprising <laughs> when you consider the contract. Um, yeah, right. He's he, that that would be that's season two of the Punisher. He goes after all the sexual assault in Hollywood. <laughs> that would be awesome. And like Harvey Wine. Uh, uh, like brings those people in. Why, why where's the trigger? <laughs> <laughs> Harvey, where's the trigger? Harvey Weinstein. Can we trust him? No. <laughs> He fucked every woman he ever worked with or killed their kids. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Where's the trigger? Uh, Where's Kevin Spacey? I was Spacey? like, look, you're not going to get work anywhere else. Can we at least kill you on Punisher? <laughs> wow. Be It'll be sort of like a comeback. It's like, hey, uh, Kevin, we want you back on Netflix. No, no, not House of Cards. We want to kill you on the Punisher. Is that cool? Where's Louis C.K.? <laughs> where's, where's the trigger? Uh, can, can I at least say my piece before he kills me? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. The last time you said your piece, you said you were going to shut the fuck up and listen. <laughs> um, hey, there's a segue into Louis C.K. I yeah, well, I know because I had said I, at work we were. I was. I had asked. I said, "Do you think Louis C.K. will will ever bounce back?" And I think, like, in a world where at the time, like. Mel Gibson was like the most hated man in Hollywood for a moment yeah, for like, saying like anti-Semitic he things. He stuff about the Jews. It wasn't like he got pulled over drunk at a traffic stop and then admitting to masturbating in front of every woman he ever hired. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, look at like a Woody Allen. I don't I mean, want Woody to. Allen. But I'm saying Woody Allen fucking married his daughter for Christ's sake for know. for a girl he raised from young a childhood or I don't know what year he got her, but you know, pretty much a good portion of her life he was her father and now he's her husband right um you know hollywood can be very forgiving and i would say if you give this about five years four or five years you know and especially with the guy like louis ck who whose material was always kind of dark in the first place yeah you know Um, i think you know he may have a comeback you know like I'll, i'll say this of all the people that have been brought up on accusations and responded to them in any way in the last, you know, what, fucking three days? <laughs> so many. Matt in, Lauer. Right, uh... yeah, in, in the last, you know, couple months or so, you know, starting with Harvey Weinstein on through, mm-hmm. he had the best response out of any of them. Rather than flat out deny it or try and make an excuse, he said, this is all true. This was fucked up what I did. I understand what I did wrong. Here are the ways that I can improve on this. I'm going to step away for a while i deserve everything that's coming to me right now and i'm just gonna try and figure out how to make this any better if that's even possible everyone was still very pissed at him which is understandable but there's not a lot more we can ask of him mm-hmm. that's that's a much better response than i didn't do it or i'm drunk I'm I, was, gay. I, I was drunk and i'm gay guys <laughs> so let's ignore that right um so i i'd say if any anyone brought up on these accusations deserves a comeback it's him whether or not he'll get one, it, we need to see what happens to everyone else that's gotten hit with these accusations. Well, remember, like, when, when Bill, Bill Cosby was proposing doing, like, a tour, mm. and people were like, get the fuck out of here. Right. Well, but and, then and, Bill Cosby's still, not in his right fucking mind and anymore. He was in the middle of shit, too. Yeah. And like, it, he didn't even give it time to cool down. He was like, hey, make a meme of me. And everyone's <laughs> like, yo, that face you made when you raped. <laughs> Like he, he was completely tone deaf to the situation. Like, hey, can I go do comedy shows? You're in the middle of a rape trial. No, <laughs> you cannot do comedy shows. All right, I'm going to shout my fat Albert catchphrase on the way out of the courthouse. Fuck it. Dude. You do I guess you own it. You, you have an honorary PhD. That's, what else can we fucking do for you at this point? I think they withdrew that PhD also, now that I think about it. I fucking hope so. But I mean, but but with that being said... <laughs> He, he can't practice the arts anymore because they <laughs> withdrew his doctorate. They, um, you know, like I get, I watch broadcast TV or digital broadcast TV because I don't have cable. But like I'll flip the channels and there's there's a channel called Bounce, which is the the urban Afro American African American the black channel. That's Let's a, that's, just... a, that's some Michael Richards <laughs> shit. Afro American. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> There is a black channel called Bounce, and they're giving, after all this, mm-hmm. they're giving episodes of The Cosby Show. And I wouldn't be surprised if, like, as of today, you can still watch The Cosby Show. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny, because, like, the, they didn't they didn't start playing Cosby Show until after mm-hmm. the trial. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so... It's, it's like we stand behind Dr. Bill. <laughs> yeah, and it's, well, I'm just saying is that, like, for a guy like Louis C.K., who, who, who comes, like... His fan base understands a dark sense of humor. 
you know, now a, a guy like him, you have to work and material out in smaller clubs. Right. So before he comes, before he comes back to the main main stage and 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 everybody kind of like we start seeing him in the public eye again, mm-hmm. he's gonna be playing you know Dubuque and he's gonna be playing fucking you know you know the Chuckle Hut and fucking you know. I don't know, Mississippi. <laughs> the Chuckle Hut in Chuckle Hut, Mississippi. <laughs> uh, you know, he's going to be playing these small rooms where people are going to come out and he's going to workshop material to fucking be fun. And, like, to, and, and of course, I, I can't see him not addressing it. Yeah. And it's going to be a very surreal comeback. I'm saying, if Mel Gibson is in fucking a, a Christmas movie this holiday season, oh, the Daddy's the Home, home Part 2, you know, it's I, not I'm, out of the realm of possibility I'm that again, Louis C.K. comes back. Mel Gibson was verbally anti-Semitic mm-hmm. and called the cops sugar tits and drove drunk. None of which is considered, at least, as harmful as what Louis C.K. did. You know, forgiving... We didn't. We haven't forgiven Michael Richards yet. Yeah, but Michael Richards, <laughs> he, through whatever luck... Fuck it. His career is based purely on luck. Right. You know... <laughs> it's like a real-life Cosmo Kramer type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, you know, he wasn't... I don't think he was funny before. He's not funny afterwards. He just he he landed the fucking opportunity of a lifetime. Well, did you ever see UHF? Yeah, uh, yeah. He was, he was good in UHF. Was good in oh, <laughs> I think what I'll do is I'll edit this in. Mm. Uh, my friend that sent in that audio mm. clip. Oh, the zombie thing. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of <laughs> speaking of people who were lucky in their career. Oh, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut to right now a uh, four minute plus uh, clip. Uh, court from Cinema Science. Oh. All right. So like I was saying before, my phone really interrupted me. I'm going to play a clip uh, sent from, if you we just left the break, you heard an ad for the podcast Cinema Psyops. Uh, a bunch of episodes a while back I had, after George Romero's death, called him <laughs> a hack and said that he stole from a bunch of Italian directors. So uh, Court from Cinema Psyops heard that, got a little upset and decided he wanted to send in uh, his side of the story. So, in all fairness, uh, I'm going to play his clip right now. So, here we go. Well, hello, Chris. It's a little time of reckoning on that uh, trash talk that you've been doing about George Romero. Look, man, you can say whatever you want. You don't have to like the guy. You don't have to like his films. You can even call the dude a hack just because you don't like the way he makes his movies. I'm totally cool with that. But you're kind of misinformed when you're saying that he ripped off the Italian zombie films. It's actually kind of the opposite. Now, here's a brief rundown of the history of zombies. It starts in like 1932 with White Zombie, and that's the one that stars Bela Lugosi. Now, we're going to fast forward a few years. We got a couple of other movies that have zombies in them, you know, like Revenge of the Zombies, I Walked with a Zombie, Voodoo Man, Voodoo Island, Zombies of Morito, Four Skulls of Jonathan Drake. Now, this is all in the like late 50s kind of stuff, and that's all like voodoo zombies where it's the power of some kind of voodoo curse brings the zombies back, and they're slaves Slaves to a zombie master who they're just under his control or her control or whatever. And then it starts getting kind of sci-fi where the dead are brought back by aliens that are invading or being controlled where like an alien will possess the corpse. That's like invisible invaders. Plan 9 from outer space. Teenage zombies even, you know, whatever. But that's all kind of like the, you know, late 50s. Even like Ray Dennis Steckler, who was kind of before George Romero's Night of the Living Dead with the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies but are they really zombies or are they people that have just been horribly disfigured by a lady who's ticked off at them but anyway the one thing i will say that romero is definitely ripping off though and he even cops to this is uh like last man on earth or the richard matheson novel i am legend there's a lot of stuff very similar particularly to the vincent price version of that movie that you'll see in the night of the living dead pretty close right there and so he is snagging from that but the thing that makes george romero's night of the living dead so important is it is the very first film to depict zombies specifically as reanimated corpses that go after people in an attention to eat them. Previously to this, the zombies would strangle, they would uh, bludgeon, they would dismember, you know, they would do that kind of stuff. But George Romero is the one who made the zombies come forth and devour. And he's also the one that everybody else patterned their stuff after. There's other movies that came out after this, but the big one that Romero did that triggered off all of these Italian zombie movies that were patterned after it, it's all from Dawn of the Dead. That's where it spurs from. So Dawn of the Dead comes out late 1978, kind of early 1979, which it was released as Zombie, Z-O-M-B-I, in 
Italy. And then immediately after that, Fulci's releasing a film that he initially did not want to have to be tied into that, but it was sold as Zombie 2 in Italy because they just did that. They would make unofficial sequels all the time. And that really sparks the craze in Italy is Dawn of the Dead and how popular it was there. Now, there was an Italian involved in the production of Dawn of the Dead. One of the producers was Dario Argento, but really he just kind of let Romero come over to Rome, write the script, do his thing and and hang out. And then Romero shot it in Pittsburgh and, you know, it was all on his own. And uh, George Romero does his thing, makes this movie, and then the Italians go nuts for it. And there's so many things that are made after that, you know, like Nightmare City, Zombie Holocaust, Burial Ground, like a crazy amount of Italian zombie movies. But the important thing is, you did say Romero's ripping off the Italian zombie movies, but the Italians didn't even really get into it, really, until after Romero's Dawn of the Dead. So that's not a reason to call him a hack. You can say you think he's a hack because you don't like his films. I'm totally fine with that. They're not for everybody. Not every movie's ever going to be for everybody, and I'm cool with that. But in this case, you're kind of misinformed there, dude. <laughs> They're more or less ripping him off. And the reason everybody's all up in arms and in love with Romero in particular is his style of zombie is the zombie that became the template for everything else. And he is the one who set that genre on its head and made it to where there's really no known reason. There's no supernatural cause for it. The dead are just walking around and they're devouring the living. And that was horrifying in 1968. And it made such a mark that even the sequel to it, Dawn of the Dead, became a cultural phenomenon like 10 years later, right? And every time he puts out another one, another like flash in the pan bunch of uh, zombie movies start getting created as well. The only one that uh, really I don't think hit that pattern is probably Land of the Dead because the zombie craze was already on hardcore when that was released. And that was basically a major studio trying to use Romero's name to make their own zombie film get better noticed. And it's got its issues, but I still like it. So I hope that clears it up for you. Again, you want to call him a hack because you don't like his films? I'm fine with that. But you're wrong if you think it's because the Italians were there first and he ripped them off. That is completely false. And we're back. All right, so I played the clip from uh, Court, which we had listened to before the podcast. Uh, so it's not fresh in our minds. It's not, it's not fresh in our minds. But I, I guess, you know, you would be the more uh, zombie fan of, I, than I, I would. I, like, I'd say I'm the more pro-Romero person. Than... You, you pulled out, like, your zombie yeah, DVD yeah, collection. Yeah, I've got, I've got a, a tin box of zombie movies. And just <laughs> as he was listing off, like, here's zombie history. I was just like, oh, let's see which ones of these I got. But and knowing <laughs> knowing Court, because I've been listening to his podcast for like two years now, yeah. um, you know, it's not like it's not he wasn't I don't he wasn't reading a Wikipedia oh, page. Oh, right, that's right, right. he that's I, pro- yeah. for him. It's off the dome. I I, 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 I fully believe he, he knows that stuff, and he was, he was able to you know speak very educatedly about it there. And I'm I'm in agreement. George Romero was important. Mm-hmm. He obviously didn't rip off the people who made sequels to his movies. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you could have just been factually wrong there. I will say, though, without George Romero making Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead, we never would have gotten on the road to having to watch Batman vs. Superman. So maybe he is a bit of a <laughs> <laughs> Because Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder, the director of Dawn of the Dead remade, in 2003, 2004. 2004, if I'm not mistaken. Because I, I love, I, the, oddly enough, I love that movie. Oh, I love Dawn of the Dead. It's real, Zack Snyder's not a bad filmmaker. When he's making Asterisk. <laughs> when he's making dark movies. When he's making dark movies or when he is parroting someone else's vision in some way. Yeah, if he's not making exact replica right. if he's not right. doing a page to screen adaptations right. like 300 300 and Watchmen, Watchmen were phenomenal works of art. Dawn of the Dead D- Dawn of the Dead was a very broad strokes retelling of the original and it was but, dark as shit and it that's a movie that lends itself to being more of a visionary than a storyteller because ultimately they're in a mall mm-hmm. for the whole fucking movie and it's just kind of all about which cool image are we moving to next scene. It, it's it's inconsequential how the characters interact. You can enjoy them. You can like how the characters melt with each other. But at the end of the day, hey, when that chick got cut in half with a chainsaw, that was really cool and well shot. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's the kind of movie it is. These zombies running fast, that scares me. He invokes emotions instead of a good plot, and that's what that movie needs. Well, I, I mean, I like that it was a... It, I mean, obviously, well, the first one was a satire also. Just spilled coffee on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me help you with that. Well, well yeah. It, yeah <laughs> Put the napkin down um, first. No. The, the first... <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the first yeah. one was consumerism, and this one was terrorism. Well, it was terrorism, but like... 
like the mall looked like a real place. Like the coffee yeah. shop was called Sacred Grounds, which I thought was pretty funny. Hollowed, Hollowed, Hollowed Grounds. Yeah. Um, you know, the stores looked like stores. It was very, it was a very realized world yeah. that they lived in. And, you know, people, you know, if, how would you transport a bunch of people? Yeah, in the back of a truck, you yeah. know, uh, you know. Taking pot shot, like shooting shooting zombies in the head is a sport. You know, shoot yeah, the one yeah. that looks like Burt Reynolds, yeah, which I think uh-huh. were they trying to insinuate that was Burt Reynolds? I don't believe zombie? it was. It, it was just they looked like them. Uh-huh. And then yeah, the next one was like, "Ooh, get Jay Leno." And it was just like he just had a big change. Wow, barely even looked like them. No, that might. Have been, I think the Burt Reynolds one was the wow. <laughs> he's good barely even looked like him that, yeah. um, did, they, did they show Rosie, I was about to say Rosie O'Donnell was one of them also show Rosie O'Donnell just Steve the asshole was like hey how about Rosie O'Donnell <laughs> kind of points into the crowd and you know and it's so funny like until like recently like with Modern Family he was always that guy from Dawn he's, of the he's, Dead yeah, he still was it Ty, Ty Bur- 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 Burrell Ty Burrell that sounds right yeah yeah and, and still to me like Modern Family comes out like that fucking asshole better give them the piece of the boat <laughs> You know, and then like the one asshole gets bit. Is he the asshole that gets bit and doesn't tell anybody? Because like most zombie movies, that's a zombie trope. The no, one no, asshole. No. Um, like, there isn't really like a secret bite. Uh huh. There's well, no, or is it the pregnant girl? The, or the no? pregnant no. chick gets bit, but they just kind of like isolate her for the labor or something, mm-hmm. and then you know she and the baby. Are, I could have done without the zombie baby. If, I mean, if, if, if you're giving me that movie to edit, I'm just cutting out the zombie baby plot line. And then, other than that, we're, we're good. It's, it's I, I want film. a two hour zombie baby movie. And, if we have a boss baby movie, okay, you know what? I want, I re, want. Re, reshoot the zombie baby A preschool attack by zombies. Re, reshoot the zombie baby scene with today's technology so it's not just, ah, CG demon baby. Because it was just like opened eyes and a gumped out fucking toothpaste plastered onto this real baby. I, I don't need that shit. Um, also, why did the baby come out with shark teeth? I don't fucking know. Uh, I don't think it really did. I'm probably just painting. That I don't. Zack Slinger's not that bad of a filmmaker that he'd give the zombie baby sharpened teeth. Um, I want a zombie attack on a preschool. That's fucked up. I want that movie. Well, no, 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 hold on. That wasn't a full sentence. That's fucked up. However, I've got um, I've kind of like a list of zombie short stories for me to give you. Oh, okay. Because you know, there's there's one in there that's about it's like a preschool teacher and all of her students are zombies. Oh. And she just like keeps them chained up and goes about her business. It's, it's pretty cool. I think Stephen King wrote it. Oh. Yeah. It sounds familiar now oh, that okay. you say that. Um, okay. But yeah, Romero's a hack. Fuck him. <laughs> 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 you took courtside all this time and <laughs> courtside. You took courtside all yeah, this time. I, I had courtside seats for this, just so I can say Romero's a hack. Fuck no, I, he he's a very important filmmaker. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna sit through his shit if I don't have to. Though. Mm-hmm. It's and not because it was it was bad for its time, but it's dated at this point. Yeah. If, if I can watch Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead or George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, and my dad would fucking hit me for saying this, mm-hmm. he, you know, he's abusive. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> he never laid a hand on me, even for a hug. Uh, <laughs> also, not true. Um, <laughs> now you don't know what to say. But I, I, I'd watch Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead before George Romero, it's just because it, it ages better. Yeah, it's, it's it's ten years old versus fifty. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's been. I'm not. I was never a zombie movie person. Hmm. You know, like. You know, I mean, okay, I like Dawn of the Dead, but I like more because it was like a satire, or not satire, but it was sort of a holding up a mirror a to com- society. In yeah, that sort of a creepy a, sort of way. Yeah, yeah. And, and it and it was funny. It had lighthearted enough moments in it. Yeah, like when people are like, oh, 28 Days Later. And I'm like, I fucking hated 28 Days Later. It's I thought it was like, fucking boring as it's, fuck. It's well made, but I was just sad the whole time. <laughs> just walking through empty London. I'm like, fuck, dude, what if that's me someday? <laughs> I just, I, don't, I never got it, like, the, you know, zombie movies never really were my thing. They're not so, my bag, baby. I, I, I love good zombie movies. There's <laughs> so much chuffa to sift through with zombies, though. Yeah. Which, the Walking Dead, as much as I used to love that show in the comic series, has just become another voice in the crowd of the zombie craze, guys. <sighs> now, uh... We could go on for hours about Walking Dead sometime, but not now. We gotta talk about Infinity War before we run out of time. Yeah, um... Well, I, I mean, before we get into the Infinity War stuff, um, today, as a matter of fact, as we're recording this, and, and we're, not that we're going to make it, not that it's even available by us, um, they're giving a double feature at part of the those uh, 
events. What do they call those? The movie events, uh, the Fathom. Fathom events. They're doing the room and the disaster artist, or they're doing the disaster artist first and the room, but they're not doing it. In... That's today. That's today. Fuck, man! Yeah. I quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's. I mean, it's nowhere. It's not in Rochester. Oh. Like the closest, the closest one, if I'm not mistaken, is is like it's like New York City and or Boston, Massachusetts. So a six hour drive each way. Yeah, full take of gas. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking give it three months, we'll get the DVDs and watch them back to back. I'm just saying. Um, but you know, I, I'm getting sick and tired of this whole like hacky like I like movies that are so bad they're good because I never fucking heard of the room. It came out in 2003. But for some reason, it got like this big surge. It's like four, three or four years ago. We're like, oh, it's so bad. It's, I, and I honestly think it was like from like one of those like I love the '80s VH1 shows, or not. Not that it's not that it was the '80s, but it was one of those shows. I, I, I love the zero zeros. Yeah, I love the aughts. Yeah. I I think I Is honestly that a thing now. I think they had the aughts. Like, I, I love the 2010s. It's just this recursive loop, and like everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly believe they had one of the aughts. And that might have been where it was, was. It was, and it was like, you know, oh, the room, and it's so bad, it's so good. And, and he made money selling either leather jackets or denim, designer denim pants or, you know, and oh, and, and you know, he hardly meant to make this movie. And, and, you know, you know, he thought it's good and, and it's really bad. And like, you know, but uh, uh, that, I understand that, the that's story. Kind of shitting on his effort, too. Yeah, it's just, but I hate like the, oh, it's so bad, it's good, movie. you know, like, and, and, and not to, like, I, I love Court, you know, Court's a good friend of mine, yeah. I, I like his show. It's um, so bad, it's good. Is but it's, like, no, but He's like, what out. happens is, is a lot of the associates of, of his show mm. are sort of like all these hacky, wannabe, MST3K, uh, wannabes mm-hmm. that like, oh, we're gonna watch movies and we're gonna talk, you know, we're gonna watch, you know, the name of fucking cheesy movie, you know, uh, you know, uh, Touch of Satan. Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna watch Mono's Hands of Fate mm-hmm. and talk about how bad it is. Well, yeah. Well, first and foremost, MST3K already did that, mm-hmm. you know. But so it just to me, and like I said, Court's like the exception to the rule. But like, like on his show, they advertise other podcasts, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I listen to. I've tried to listen to a couple of them, and they're like, you know, oh, we're gonna get drunk and watch bad movies. Like that's such a fucking hack thing to do. And we're gonna watch movies. They're so bad they're good and i kind of like this is the pendulum swinging back the other way I, i'm getting sick and tired of the whole let's ironically watch movies that are bad they're good so right. you know I, I i mean i'm happy to get drunk and watch bad movies with you sometime but don't turn the microphone on <laughs> i'll start crying and shit <laughs> stop touching me there he spilled your coffee touch me somewhere else <laughs> where's harvey weinstein <laughs> <laughs> People get blackout drunk, you get backhand drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the trigger? It's up my ass. <laughs> and, uh, well, no, the last time I hung out here, we were playing uh, Injustice 2 for PlayStation 4. Oh, yeah, we were. <laughs> and I kind of, I, I was doing voices the whole time. Well, we were both doing voices the whole time. <laughs> it was kind of like a looper. <laughs> kind of like a looper. Because there's, there's a scene when you're the Flash, your super, your super move is grabbing the person taking them with you, running through time so fast that you smash them into the Sphinx, mm. breaking the nose of the Sphinx, tra- then traveling even further into the back in time, smashing them into a T-Rex, which mm. is in the middle of eating a fucking mammoth, uh, a woolly mammoth, and then you you fly back to the present where you hit your opponent with the opponent moments before they go into the past. <laughs> so, for some reason, I was doing a, a, I was doing a Steve, uh, Sylvester Sloan because Ralph Garman does a Sylvester Sloan. Right. And I just I was like, it's sort of like a looper, you know? <laughs> I, I thought the looper joke was when we were uh, mirror matching Brainiacs. Oh, we were? Yeah, and it was like, I'm Brainiac 6. And like, oh, that's the Brainiac from the future. It was sort of like a looper. Oh, oh okay. okay. I, thought, I thought that's what that was. So, okay, yeah. And Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but yeah, it's so, uh, you know. It, I, it would be funny to have the mic running while we're playing like Injustice Two oh, or yeah. something like that. Just we'd have to select editing of the funny bits. But um, you know, that being said, uh, where was I saying? I was just tired of this fucking hacky. Like we're gonna watch movies so bad it's so good, and we're gonna get drunk while we do it. We're not gonna put forth any effort to the point where we're even going to make fun of people not putting forth effort. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's get into the Infinity War trailer. Do you want to watch it? No, we don't want to watch it. We again. just watched it we before. Ju- <laughs> we just watched it if you're 56 like minutes me, ago. If you're anything like me, you've watched it a few times already. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, 
I mean, I kind of we, me and Paul kind of talked about it the last episode, but Paul doesn't share the same excitement as as, as you do. Right? Is there something going on? Is well, no, I, I was oh. kicking my zipper. Oh, <laughs> so to speak, <laughs> kicking my zipper. It's so big. I well, kicked my zipper. Kick a zipper, five dollar. <laughs> um. Okay. So where, where do we begin? Uh, Thanos. Thanos. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There. There. there uh, instantly, there was memes online. Uh, yeah. Homer Simpson. Mm, infinity donut. <laughs> Uh, which ironically, then, well, not his, his portal also kind of looks like a donut. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Thanos as the as the Pawn Wars, yeah, Pawn Star, okay. guy, yeah. Pawn Stars. Oh, the, the Infinity Gauntlet. Let me call up my friend who's an expert on Infinity Gauntlets. Um, you know, once again, here's a whole. I don't want to say that these movies are geared towards men, but they are. Let's just, you know, they, they, they are geared toward twelve year old boys and thirty year old men's bodies. <laughs> Uh, but that and like if you put that with Lord of the Rings, like Lord of the Rings was all about a ring. Yeah. Here's all about a gauntlet. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's it's just this like sleeper cell of the fashion industry <laughs> trying to get you interested in this. Like, hey, they'll buy gloves if they're yellow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I hot I hot glued like <laughs> I bought like these fake little uh, stones or whatever from from the craft store and I hot glued them to like a, a, a dishwashing glove. <laughs> fashion blog with like a vision getting the mind stone fucked with it's like you won't believe what he does with that scepter um but okay so we got uh well this is now the one thing that i'm, I'm a little disappointed with with this trailer was i was under the assumption that this was involving every marvel fucking property i thought we were going to see the defenders and punisher and and maybe agents of shield who's saying we won't well, if so, they're fucking. They've kept it under wraps. It could just be ground level. Thing appears in the sky. Charlie Cox looks up, and they're like, "Why are you?" Looking? <laughs> I realized no. partway through that, like, wait a second. I picked the one blind person to look at what's happening. Well, that would be a pretty awesome post credit scene. Mm. Post credit with the, the the at least the Netflix guys, like yeah. the 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 you know the Defenders and and yeah. Punisher, because yeah. Shield, I fuck Shield. Uh, <laughs> fuck shield. Welcome, to, welcome to two strangers one podcast. Fuck shield. <laughs> Get this man a shield. Um, no, not that shield. <laughs> Just because like season one on Blu-ray. <laughs> the fuck am I supposed to do with this? Just throw it. <laughs> throw it to the aliens. <laughs> uh, but um, what I was gonna say. So I was a little disappointed that like I thought I thought somehow they were gonna incorporate the TV at least the if, Netflix universe. If they're in the movie, I don't want to see them in the trailer. I want it to be like, did you? Yeah, if it's a surprise I mean, or whatever. Did you watch Power Rangers, the movie? Yes, I saw that in the theater. Yeah, it, <laughs> there's, the, there's this one, you know, the one shot after the Megazord wins, everyone's taking pictures, and they got the Green Ranger and the Pink Ranger, like, down in the crowd and stuff. I want that sort of thing where it's, like, the fight's going on, and, like, Karen Page looks up and she's like, oh, shit, I should get off this street. Oh, okay. Sort of or, like, you know, Luke Cage is stopping a bank robbery or something as people are rushing. Just like a quick little like, hey, look, they're here, but they're 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 the street level Avengers. You don't call the defenders in to deal with Thanos. Mm-hmm. Well, that, to Punisher, it would have been nice for a show. Let me tell you, and I uh, that show makes me very homesick from New York City. I'm disgustingly from New York City. I always bring it up in conversation. You could have just left it. You're from New York City. It's already disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were a lot of scenes of people walking by the water mm-hmm. <laughs> and everybody's in brooklyn or queens mm-hmm. you know like because who, who wants to be in manhattan looking at brooklyn or queens mm-hmm. <laughs> all the scenes are in brooklyn or queens looking at manhattan mm-hmm. um it would have been nice if they had one scene where you saw like the avengers tower or whatever whatever incarnation it is maybe, now maybe, maybe they tore it down since homecoming well that I mean, and I think as the as of us recording this podcast, I had I believe Disney has like full on got the rights back to Fantastic Four. I, and they're working on it's like it, it wouldn't shock me if as we're saying this, they're sitting at a table right now saying, "Look, we'll give you Wolverine, but we're fucking keeping Cable." <laughs> yeah, uh, but it, I mean, so uh, they're getting uh, so. I mean. It would make a lot of sense mm-hmm. if that became like the Reed Richards Fantastic Four Tower or the the, 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 the Baxter building. The Baxter building. Um, That'd be cool. But you know, it, it would have been nice if in if in the Punisher, especially since there's like literally about four. There's literally like four or five scenes throughout yeah. thirteen episodes where somebody's walking by the water. Yeah, we're at the docks. Here's the skyline with yeah. with New York City in the background, yeah. with Manhattan in the background. Not the real, a single shot of Avengers Tower. Yeah, and That's not a not. A, I mean, even if I mean. 
you know, even if, you know, he just turned around, turned his head real quick, and you saw the tower, and then it just cut to the, you know, the end of the scene. Um, but, uh, but, like, Rack focuses to the tower, <laughs> like, I don't know why I did this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Um, that was Batman. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Danny Elfman's Batman theme plays <laughs> the Avengers tower. In the Avengers trailer. <laughs> I can see the Batman theme on the timeline. <laughs> It's actually shaped like a bat. Oh, um, oh shit. The, uh, we get it, we, you know, what was I going to say? <laughs> I don't, I don't fucking I, know, man. Would you have to say it if I did? You know, Peter Parker yeah. on a bus, magical portal opens up over New York City, or at least a, a circle that looks like it could be a portal of some sort. He learns he finally has arm hair. What's it? <laughs> you know, once it, New York City, which is an island 11 miles long and 3 miles wide. It's the hub of the fucking universe. <laughs> Which I guess in my point of view it is. Um, everything happens there. Everything happens else. over New York City. <laughs> Nothing has happened in the Marvel Universe on Earth that wasn't in New York City. <laughs> you know, we got aliens attacking New York City. No, well, okay, Age of Ultron was in uh, Sokovia. Sokovia. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, so we got a portal over New York City. Yeah. We're, I guess we're all assuming that's some sort of Thanos portal deal. I'm going to present aliens to Earth. And I'm going to imagine that's how Thor gets back, too. Based on his oh, through that his, his, his curling the helicopter shot when he's inside the little like engine thing or whatever. Oh, okay. That, that, that It looks like another one of those out in space. Oh, it looks like one of those portals. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I, I think it's like Thanos fucking strands Thor. He hooks up with the Guardians, and they got to get to Earth to figure this shit out. Ah, so Thor is sort of the... Uh... He's like a wired... He's, he's the god, god of thunder. thunder. Yeah, he has the, he's charging he's yeah. charging an ancient portal that probably wasn't been used for a while or something like that or <laughs> We're going to get fucking sued. <laughs> like, how would you figure that shit out? We should we showed 2 seconds of him grabbing a thing. <laughs> um Yeah, but he's not the god of hammers. <laughs> Blame Taiko Atiti, man. He led me there. Now, I had said in our in our conversations at work, I said I want a BT movie. I want Wong mm-hmm. from Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. Korg from Ragnarok, uh, Falcon. Falcon was it? Was is Falcon really? Oh, because Falcon's still Falcon's like a team. He's he's Cap sidekick. Yeah, okay, Cap sidekick, and Hulk. <laughs> we had the whole running thread of Cap shows up at the the raft at the end of uh, Civil War and just breaks Falcon. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> Fuck. He does the whole like uh, Rick Sanchez yep, yep. double middle finger as he backs out of the room. Hawkeye, okay, Ant Man, eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't risk it, my friend. On your left. Um, <laughs> and I said, like, I want a B team of all like like the sidekick characters, and then like, but the MacGuffin is like they have to rescue Howard the Duck. <laughs> you know, just like it's a Marvel one shot. Just or, something fucking stupid. Um, now with that, okay. And it's funny, we're so excited about the trailer, we haven't discussed the trailer yet. Um, no, no, there's the thing with Thor. <laughs> yeah, with Thor, um, we see Wakanda. We are missing Nebula, Ant-Man, and I believe Hawkeye. Yeah. Because, um, oh no, the last time we saw, it was, uh, the last time we saw War Machine, yeah, he's, it he's, was crashed. When, when, yeah, but when Team Cap is rushing Thanos' army or whatever, mm-hmm. War Mach- at least the War Machine armor is flying. Is flying. Now, I mean, he could still be in that suit even though he's paralyzed from the waist down or something like that. They're remote controlled at this point. Yeah, so, I mean, he can still operate it, just the legs operate themselves. Right. <laughs> he, he doesn't even really need to be in the suit as long as he's somewhere with Wi-Fi. True. <laughs> um, uh, Ant-Man, we didn't see him in the trailer, which means he's doing an excellent job. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I remember, because I mean, I've, I've seen videos like this, where like when they were doing the Age of Ultron trailer... We didn't see Quicksilver or Scarlet Witch. Uh, yeah, Scarlet Witch was it Scarlet? Yeah, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver because that was still they haven't been they weren't revealed yet or something like that. So when you watch like the Age of Ultron like original trailer, they're not in it. But when you see the movie, it's the exact same scene. But they've yeah. so like they could be in like Ant Man could be in it. Yeah. They just haven't. Oh, well, Ant Man's in it for sure. He's been confirmed. It's just he's not in the trailer. But like. Maybe but he's in none of the scenes we see, but he could be. Tiny. Maybe he's tiny the whole time. <laughs> maybe he's on Hawkeye's <laughs> arrow. Hawkeye wasn't in the Hawkeye's on it. <laughs> He shot an arrow across the screen. Yeah. Um, he's just like he's on someone's wrist the whole time. Like, my suit broke. I can't, I can't get big anymore. <laughs> but I still want to be there for moral support, guys. <laughs> Hanging on to the Hulk's, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Hawkeye, it wouldn't shock me if he was like, okay, well, I'm going to go back with my family. Cause... <laughs> I'm going to go back into hiding. Well, right, because he's like, all right, I'm out. No, we need you. Okay, I'm back. All right, I'm out now. But there's a civil war going on. 
okay. <laughs> it wouldn't shock me, you know, if they do it again where he's like, all right, I'm finally just living with my family out in our house in the middle of nowhere. I was like, mm. hey, uh, Clint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I still get the fucking news. <laughs> Big hole over New York City. And Why is it always New York City? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, Nebula was probably taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nebula is in in the Infinity Gauntlet series. She's she's very key to like the overthrow of because in the comics, Nebula is Nebula is Thanos's granddaughter, not daughter, as they made in the series, and. Uh, it's sort of a, a weird deal where he keeps her, like, she's dead, but he brings her back to life or something like that. Like, she's almost a zombie, for the lack of a better term. But he kind of keeps her around, but it's sort of like him mocking life and death mm. by leaving her kind of halfway and half and half. Yeah, and, he's a real prick. Yeah, he's, I mean, Thanos is supposed <laughs> to be a scumbag. Um, which is weird, because in this one, they're like, oh, she's not a zombie, she's half machine, you know. But, so I, I wonder if, I wonder if she's gonna be the, uh, if she's gonna be the key. Because in, in the series, this is he's she's his daughter, so um, maybe she's like, maybe she takes his side. But he he's bringing there, there are other extended members of of Thanos's family. Extended members. There, there's 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 going to be people in this movie. I, I I saw a video about it, and I forgot their fucking names. It's all like you know, I, yeah, I, I, like I, Black Saber or yeah, some I, sh- fucking name. I probably like watched that. the same video as you. And Black Saber was one of the codes in the list in Rogue One. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're like Stardust, Black Saber. Oh, okay. Wait, what was that last one? Black Saber? No, before that. Well, we're doing this bit now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there was. Uh, but he has like. Yeah, yeah he's got like children or cousins or horsemen of the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, he has guys coming with him that are sort of going to be his. He has his, guys coming with him. His lieutenant, <laughs> <laughs> Thanos, just taking it at all holes. Uh, <laughs> I could jerk off two guys and. With the Infinity Gauntlet, I can jerk off limitless. <laughs> I can jerk off everyone in this room. <laughs> you know how long it would take you to jerk off everyone in this room? Because I know how long it would take me. <laughs> With the mind gem. With the soul gem. <laughs> Which, once again, you know, we we don't know. Not once again, but uh, we don't know where the soul gem is at. We don't at. know where it is again. <laughs> we don't. But, you know, all this movie, all signs point to fucking Wakanda. Wakanda. What's he doing in Wakanda if not trying to get the last gem? Yeah. And and we still have a whole Black Panther movie to address the Soul Gem. So, you know, I got soul. Super, super bad. bad. Is that racist? Is that yeah. racist to say that Very. Black Panther has the Soul Gem? Yes. Um, let me see. What else? <laughs> we saw the trailer. We were so excited. I, I um, mean, I'm just generally pumped for it. You know, we got the Hulkbuster. You see the Hulkbuster suit. You see Banner Bruce Banner standing next to it, standing next to like the, uh, like a, the, the the arm of it. I, I'm gonna guess he's getting like Hulk tile dysfunction going on at some point. So they're like, "Well, put you in the armor, and then if you feel like you're Hulk, and just get out." Yeah, because because they you see like and and this was brought up once again on a video I watched. The way he's running, mm-hmm. the way the Hulkbuster is running, is the way kind of Hulk ran in Thor Ragnarok, yeah. very animal like. So if it is uh, Bruce Banner. On the inside. Now, someone had brought this up, and it would be so fucking cool if it happens. What if he's using that as, you know, as erectile dysfunctional yeah. thing? And then he hulks out. And then the he hulks suit? out in the oh. suit, breaking through the suit as the Hulk. If that doesn't happen, I want my fucking money back. <laughs> you know, and it's a disposable suit. It's not like Tony can't make another one. Yeah. So that would be a fucking kick ass scene. Mm. You know, he, fin- he finally gets angry enough. He finally gets mad enough to fucking uh, go through the suit. Um,. Let me see. I mean, I kind of like the idea of the Hulk and the Hulkbuster suit fighting together. That would be fucking awesome. Yes. You know, one was meant to be a deterrent, and now, you know, they're using it to work hand in hand. Well, if you think about it, like, the Hulkbuster suit was made to be stronger than the Hulk. Mm-hmm. So what if you just retrofit it to put the Hulk in it? Oh, my God. Hulk strength plus Hulkbuster <laughs> strength? Well, then it would have to be bigger, then. Oh, no, well, you know, it'd be the Iron Man suit, but on the bigger, Hulk. Bigger on the inside. Yeah, yeah it's... it's <laughs> Iron Hulk. Whoa. <laughs> Give me that movie. Iron Hulk and Iron in Iron Hulk Heart. <laughs> Hulk and Heart. Like Beauty and the Beast. Pe- title pending. <laughs> DC. I mean, Disney owns it, so. <laughs> Maybe Emma Watson yeah. is Riri Williams, and the riots start. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about whitewashing. People got mad when uh, what's her face played the the ancient one. He just Brit washed Iron. <laughs> um, let me see. I mean, I'm. I'm I can't think of any other things with the trailer. Huh? Iron Spider. This is, a, this is a decent jumping off point. Get this man a shield. It, 
Uh, watch the trailer, and every time your heart flutters, yeah, ours too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Captain America as Nomad running with what looks like some sort of Wakandan gauntlets. Just some Wonder Woman bracelets. Which, great. which you know, we would love to see maybe transform into some sort of shield. Or yeah. maybe each shield, each of them a shield themselves. Or if he just bashes them together and they make like a fucking tower shield and he just walks through Riot Cop style. Wow. I want that shot. Yeah. Well, it would it would be for all intents and purposes the Captain America shield, but like, what if they make it? They made it like. What if it's guns too? What if it's like Deadshot wrist guns? Because he was using guns up until Avengers. Yeah, he was. Yeah. And if ever you need guns, I think it's when aliens invade. Yeah. Or when Billy Russo's being an asshole. <laughs> I, I just, I just don't think they're gonna go with guns just because. It just it. It would be silly not to use any weapon at your disposal when Thanos is attacking. True. Cap is a crack shot. He has superhuman everything physical. Mm-hmm. He's Everything about him is just peak human physical condition. So, you know. But what if, I mean, I, I was going to say, like, what if his, sh- like you said, like the riot shield, but what if it's like ceremonially like a long, like a... <laughs> like a bit, like an African shield, like a long, like a long shield. It's not oh, a like circular a, shield, like, like an oval shield, but like ceremonial like looking, a, like a shaka zulu kind of thing. Yeah, oh, you know, what I'm saying like where it looks, you know, it has a design to it. It has, it's not just a circle. It's a long thing that maybe looks like a mask or looks like a a thing. But I mean, not that well, he, he like puts it on as a mask. Like I'm not going out there. <laughs> <laughs> but your face will be bulletproof. I don't want my face to be bulletproof. Cap, you're insulting our host. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you were the fucking mask, Tony. You can't say fucking Disney. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, get this man a shield, which had instantly the next day online there was a meme. Yeah. You know, get this man pictures of Spider. man Get this man pictures of Spider. That was my favorite. You know, uh, you know, get this man report December fifteenth, nineteen ninety one. Uh, you know, uh, you know, this Aunt May, you know, get this woman a husband. Uh, it, Peter Cole, get this man a father. <laughs> uh, I was, it was like Loki, like get this guy a throne. That was whatever. He he can get it himself. Yeah, He's more than capable. And we see, we do see Loki with the cosmic cube yep. in the trailer. Fucking rat. Yeah. Well, he's gonna save his own ass. Mm. You know, he's gonna use it as a bargaining chip at least. He might save some ass guardians too. But I'm. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm protecting his ass. Um, yeah, it's well. I mean, it pretty much, it's gonna end up. I mean, you know, we'll see what happens after Thor Ragnarok mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, getting people oh, off the um, ship. We might have watched different videos then. Thanos kills a fuckload of Asgardians. Oh, uh, the, there's a shot him standing in front of just a pile of bodies, and they've got Asgardian tattoos. Oh, so he he kills several at least. <laughs> Maybe he kills several. Then gets to Loki. And Loki's, and Loki's like, like, stop killing people. You <laughs> want this, right? Get it for it. <laughs> or, the, uh, or some illusion. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. That's what she said. Uh, wait, um, about what? <laughs> <laughs> we're wrapping up my penis in a condom before I stick it in her. Why? Is she cheating on you? Uh, no, maybe I'm cheating on her. and I have. Or what if I'm having sex with a stranger? And she said, wrap it up. Because she doesn't you, know what diseases you, you, I may have. You were too long. She wants the cock. And, I, and, and, and she doesn't know if I have gonorrhea. So if I wear a condom, I can't give her gonorrhea. See, I, I've been on the same page as you for about a minute. <laughs> I was just letting you keep going. <laughs> uh, all right. So please visit two strangers, one podcast.net where you can find things, all things show related. Find everything show related. You can find links to our iTunes page. If you have an iPhone, an iPad, or iPod, you can download us on the iTunes. On the iTunes, I don't know if anyone even listens. Anyone gets their podcast of iTunes anymore? But if you do, you can get that. You can find us on iTunes. If you have an Android device, you can find us on the Stitcher app. That's S T I T C H E R. The Stitcher app for Android devices. Every podcast worth listening to: Kevin Smith's podcast, Chris Hardwick's The Nerdist, This American Life, Adam Carolla. They're all on the Stitcher app, and of course, Paul's other podcast. I have to mention <laughs> the Tsunami Faithful podcast, also on Stitcher. Um, you can find us on the our hosting site, SoundCloud, which is also available for Android and iPhone devices. 
Uh, we want your money. We need your money. But if you can't give us a dime, you can uh, like us on Facebook slash Two Strangers One Podcast. All spelled out: Two Strangers One Podcast. Like and share this episode. Like and share the entire page. Uh, so even if you can't contribute a dime, it's still helping the show out. Uh, if you want to write us, you can write us at Two Strangers One Podcast at Gmail dot com. That's all spelled out: Two Strangers One Podcast at Gmail dot com. Which I forgot to check the email before the podcast, which I'll probably do right now. Um, if you want to write to us, no, I just said that. You can write to us at two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. How long you been doing We're this? on Twitter. <laughs> We're on Twitter uh, at Stranger Podcast. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, for the episode, now if you go on iTunes or SoundCloud, um, we've only had episodes from the past year. The podcast has been out for five years. So you could also go on uh youtube and search for two strangers one podcast and listen to the very first episode well over five five and a half years now we're at the halfway point of the five and a half years worth of two strangers one podcast and you can also look up my stranger vlogs which i've recorded like two more stranger vlogs i haven't like updated it in about a year but you could also uh go and check out my my stranger vlogs find out what someone was stealing uh from you know a couple episodes back i'd mentioned that a guy was reposting my stranger vlogs and just and podcasts in general um, if you want to hear my audio book from my second book, Odd I See It's Elven Road, that's also on the YouTube page. Do you read it? No, I don't. I had a computer program read it. I wanted to read it, but I just, I, for some reason, I didn't like hearing the sound of my voice, which of, is oddly enough. A lot enough. of emotion out of that computer. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that's more bullshit. Nothing new on the, no, not, no new emails. Oscar fell off the face of the earth. Oscar, one of our super fans, used to write every episode. Now he hasn't written in a while. Maybe he's dead. Uh, oh, he's down in Chile. It's I possible. hope I didn't just make it true by saying it. <laughs> well, no, there was there was like there was like a, an earthquake in Chile, and like we didn't hear from him for a while, and then like then he wrote back and was like, "Chris, you're still a fat fuck." <laughs> so I, I got out from under that rubble <laughs> just to tell you you're a prick. <laughs> I crawled out. Um, so is there anything that you want to promote or pimp or want to people get in contact with you, or you don't want people? You don't want people to get in contact you, with you. Me the fuck <laughs> well, um, I. I don't know. I don't really have anything going on worth pimping at the moment. Okay. If I do, I'll let you know. Right now, I'm just, uh, I'm just playing Mario. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening and had as much fun as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers in One Podcast. I'm Chris. I've been Austin. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. Bye. You should be fapping. All right. Here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee. But it is spelled C O L O N. Him punny. But <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with oh, a materialist. I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure God. I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell, sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. <laughs> Christopher Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think of this? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! 
Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, and if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it still. Lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15 and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. Five dollars yeah. is insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, come! I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. At Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker, I will and his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. And you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out Two Strangers One Podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.